this time on Dream Funders. Because I can tell you're a tree hugger and I'm not. I'm about yeah. money, not electric cars. So. I understand. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like money too. Will a new plan to grow organic lettuce in the highlands turn into another kind of green for this local man? I do hope that you can see this as an innovative new business and that you could want to grow together with me. Plus, a new idea to capitalize on the bourbon boom with a new kind of drive through you Drive your car directly through our building. Local entrepreneurs pitch their plans to our panel of investors. It's the matchmaking show that's all business. Dream Funders. Welcome to Dream Funders. I'm Melissa Fraser with the show that hopes to match big ideas with big bucks. This time, a local man is hoping to make some green by growing greens. I control every aspect of the growing process. Will his idea for urban farming grow into something fruitful? We'll find out. And a new way to go grocery shopping without getting out of your car. And what are your sales so far? Will this idea fit the bill? Or will our investors slam on the brakes? We'll meet our dreamers coming up, but right now, let's meet the funders. Our panel tonight includes Micah Busey. His latest venture was just voted the number one direct sales company in America. Mark Lampkin, the CEO of Lampkin Wealth Management. He's listed as one of the top financial managers in Kentucky. Marty McClellan is with us. He's the chairman of the Enterprise Angels funding team while managing $280 million in accounts and hedge funds. And Jennifer Williams a successful e-commerce entrepreneur who hit it big with her business called Cuddle Clones. Those are our funders. Now let's meet our first dreamer. Hello funders. My name is John Hayes, owner and operator of Updrop Farms Indoor Vertical Hydroponic Farms. And I gotta ask you, do you know where your food comes from? Because I plan to bring fresh, local, better than organic produce to local, different locations throughout the Louisville market where currently the supply cannot be met by all the demand. So what I do is I grow indoors vertically with hydroponic systems, taking maximum amount of use of my, my footprint. I control every aspect of the growing process from the nutrients, the lights, the carbon dioxide in the air, and I leave nothing to chance like traditional farming. Right now I have a, a few systems in place that are producing different types of lettuces, herbs, microgreens, that myself and my friends and neighbors are really enjoying. So right now what I need to do is expand to a retail location, which I can use as my centralized hub for local deliveries, local pickup, monthly subscriptions, as well as deliveries to restaurants and other local businesses that want to do the wholesale side. This facility will require 24 vertical rack systems capable of producing 115,000 heads of lettuce per year and about 1,000 square feet at a cost of around 62 cents per head, which I can sell anywhere from a dollar to two dollars depending on the retail versus wholesale side, things of that nature. Uh, this facility will cost me around $75,000, which I am willing to give up 15% of equity in my company. Uh, I do hope that you can see this as an innovative new business and that you could want to grow together with me and you can answer the question of where your food comes from. So thank you. I'll take any questions. Mark. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, I, I don't know what a regular head of lettuce costs. <laughs> how, do, what? Okay. how do you compare? Well, there's obviously all different kinds. So you can go to Kroger and get you know stuff that's wholesaled in, delivered from across the country. Uh, and my problem with that is that it's usually picked not by fa flavor and taste and ripeness. It's, it's, packed on, it's picked on travelability, if, if that's I mean, portability, yes. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of these hyper local micro farms that I can sell stuff and keep everything in house. So I'm not paying transportation costs. Uh, I have an electric car now that I bought to do the deliveries so I can zip back and forth to local places real quick. Um, growing in house in Louisville is really great because electricity is extremely cheap across the entire country. So Whereas a lot of people say this is a really expensive thing to get into and it's going to always jack up your costs of your lettuce, it's, my numbers are not working out that way and maybe because I'm keeping it so small. And so what is, what is the cost, of, what's a head of lettuce cost in, it, at Kroger it, today? At Kroger today, anywhere from a dollar to three dollars, depending so if you what, get live they, lettuce. what do they buy it for? 
Uh, I would assume they're buying it anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar, depending on so you know, where they're So you're telling me, getting. though, by growing this here locally perfectly, it's better than organic, it tastes better, and you can do it as at their cost or cheaper than what they're getting at, buying at today? Absolutely, yes. No problem at all. What do you think? Will any of our investors bite on this organic idea? We'll find out when Dream Funders returns. I'm Melissa Fraser, back with you on Dream Funders, the show that matches local entrepreneurs with local investors. Right now, John Hayes is hoping to raise some cabbage from our funders for his idea of growing organic lettuce in the city. So what I do is I grow indoors vertically with hydroponic systems, taking maximum amount of use of my, my footprint. I control every aspect of the growing process from the nutrients, the lights, the carbon dioxide in the air, and I leave nothing to chance like traditional farming. Uh, this facility, around $75,000, which I am willing to give up 15% of equity in my company. Uh, I do hope that you can see this as an innovative new business and that you could want to grow together with me. Will his dreams wilt away? Or is this idea growing on any of our funders? What, how much can you produce? And, and if you sold everything that you grow, what are those numbers look like? So let's do if we did heads of lettuce at 115,000 heads. That's 10 turns per year, which is extremely conservative. I think I can, I think I can get that to around 12 to 13 turns per year. Which a turn is how many plants can you get in this one site per year? Um, and at that rate, you know, let's say I do get a a dollar fifty a head, and that's a lot of my my bread and butter would be to deliver it to customers directly and no middleman in it whatsoever. And at the 62 cents and making around 90 cents per head, you know, wait, wait, good wait, amount. Wait, wait, I'm wait. sorry. Your, so your business model is to deliver 115,000 heads of lettuce and a Prius to your consumer? Not quite, yeah. No, not all delivery. Pickup is going to be a big part of it. So there will be huge discounts for any kind of monthly subscription because everything is so pre-programmed and I know when everything's going to come out that restaurants have been really and I'm sorry I'm kind of getting away That's from right. customers so uh, the customers can come in whenever they want to they can pay one flat rate and they have the same thing and the varieties are always going to be available I can have the core sets and I can have varieties coming out and restaurants have been really, really interested in the fact that I can actually give them growing space and they tell me what they want. So that's a really nice thing too. So they can tell me, you know, they want a certain type of microgreens for the next few weeks and try it out. And if they like it, they can keep it. And I can keep turning out that same amount like that. for the same price. And they get the exact same product every time instead of a variety of their food distributor getting it from Canada. So and do you have Mexico a problem with week. tweaking your motto? to really go after more of a wholesale restaurant distribution than getting away from your moms and pops or are you just so passionate about changing the world a grandma at a time that that's your single focus? No, I mean, it you're, definitely I can tell is, you're a tree hugger and I'm not. I'm about yeah. money, not electric cars. So. I understand. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like money too, for sure. Um, and you know, the wholesale part of it, that is where the big guys keep getting into and I, I can sell to wholesale, 100%. Now, maybe to Kroger, who's gigantic, might be a little tougher than a local restaurant, but I can do wholesale, no problem, and I can get it to them. I mean, yeah, my car is really small, but I can fit you know, up to 500 heads of lettuce in there, no problem, um, and I also have a van lined up that I'm so gonna So go back to the numbers. To. If we turn that over 10, 10, 10 times conservatively, yes. what, what do you think your gross revenue, and, and you, you can do that, or you need one or two employees, What's your gross revenue? What'll be if we sold them all? What's your gross profit? Uh, one hundred and fifteen thousand, right around one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, in that ballpark. Is your it's gross revenue or is that okay? Yes. And, and so that your net profit would what would be your net on one hundred eighty thousand gross? Uh, right around ninety thousand dollars. Okay. Do you pay yourself a salary right now? Uh, I planned on paying myself a salary starting around the forty to fifty thousand range. Okay. So uh, at fifty thousand, that leaves forty thousand profit, yes. correct? Yes. So we're saying profit, but that's just based on revenue that's minus based cost. Based on him growing them. If you had the contracts to sell them, and we maximize if that. If he had but the contracts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And if the whole salary part, 
I, my passion with it, I am very negotiable on all these figures, so I can, I can definitely take a cut if I'm You can have free lettuce. And, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Feed myself, for sure. No problem at all. Go. To what scale have you already done it? Uh, right now, actually, I built a 4x8 rack in a greenhouse that I constructed in my backyard, a passive solar greenhouse I built in my backyard earlier this year. Um, and it's growing right now. Uh, it's 360 heads in my backyard. I'm actually going to make this easy for you. Uh, I, I, I love what you're doing. I'm uh -huh. passionate about vegetables and organic fruits. I, th I think there's a there's a real drive in the industry to, to, to do that. I think you're going to have a probably a problem getting with some of your bigger distributors like Kroger's or yeah. you know mm -hmm. your smaller ones, especially in Louisville, sound like a great opportunity. Restaurants and, and such, but. I just, I just don't think there's enough profit in there to get me interested. I think, I think you haven't quite understood all the mechanics of what it's going to take to make the business tick. Breakage okay. in making your product, you're not going to have 100% of your product turn out good. You're not going to have 100% delivered good. You're going to have some breakage in there that you have to account for. I would encourage you to keep moving, but just yeah. for me, I don't think it quite fits yet. So. Gotcha. Do any of our funders want to invest some green in John's green thumb? <laughs> Um, no, I, I, you know, I was involved in it. There's a local charity in town um, started by Gary Heine from Heine Brothers, and they were trying to do exactly this. They were using coffee grounds as the basis for their compost, and they had vertical uh, hydroponic um, vegetables that they were growing. And it was kind of based off a, of a group in Milwaukee. And, and, and the more I looked at, the more they looked at it, they realized that even with volunteer labor, they couldn't make money. So. You know, I guess my experience that with, you know, even paying labor nothing and getting the capital donated, they still couldn't make it break even. So, so I just think the, I think the costs are too great, the effort's too large, and the profit's too thin for me to want to invest in. Okay. I don't have anything further to add. I really like you. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I'm probably naive because I always like the best in people, and I think you're okay. a very honest kid. Yeah. Um, I don't know that the money's there. I'm not going to commit seventy-five thousand dollars. If I did, and we meet again, um, I mean, I'm going to have. I mean, the, the paying you a salary is the money's just not there. But I believe in you enough to where. Uh, if I put up 75 grand, I mean, I, I mean, it's the money's not. I mean, I have to have half the company. Right. I mean, we and we take dollars out together, so gotcha. so I can get money back. So, um, you know, if, if that's of interest to you, I'll meet with you. Um, you know, I can't. You know, I'll meet with you in the next week or so. Okay. And if, uh, um, if you know, it's yes or no tonight. If you, it's yes to the degree, if you want to accept those terms, I'll. I just really like you, and I I believe in you. Um, Thank you. And I've bet, you know, I've, I've bet that on a horse before, and I like you better on a horse. So. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. There's a lot of contingencies, because I don't understand this business. I have to come see the rack. I have to come gotcha. do numbers with you. Um, but it's 75000 for 50%. We take money out equally, assuming that I'm doing some due diligence. I know some people that I might be able to get everything you've done, everything you grow sold. There's, a, there's some contingencies we, we got to work out, but... Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yes I'd no. be more than interested to hear that. All right. No problem at all. Deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll do it. Let's see. It looks like a seed's been planted with Mark Lampkin. We'll have to see how far it grows. And we still have more to come on Dream Funders. Next, meet a local woman who says her business is a breakthrough when it comes to drive through It's a concept that I've been working on for a while in my head and I'm super proud of it. Can she capitalize on the bourbon boom or will the idea go bust? See what our investors think next on Dream Funders. Welcome back to Dream Funders. I'm Melissa Fraser inside the Fraser History Museum in downtown Louisville. We're hoping to make someone's idea for the next big thing become a reality. And right now, it's time to meet our next dreamer. Hello, my name is Jennifer Stetson and I'm here today seeking $100,000 in exchange for 25% of my company, Bourbon and Bells. 
Bourbon and Bell's Pantry and Libations is your one-stop, on-the-go, grocery and liquor store that allows you the convenience of never leaving your car. Our 6,000 square foot building has been designed to literally allow you to drive your car directly through our building. Once inside, you will find an elegant design inspired by the beauty and charm of Fast Horses and Kentucky Bourbon. With a variety of bourbon, wide selection of craft beers, local wines, and other <clears throat> assorted liquors, our retail store is sure to impress. Our pantry products that we provide are items such as eggs, milk, and bread, to diapers and other household items. Carrying Kentucky Proud products, our goal is to embrace the community and keep it local. Our unique concept also features a Bourbon and Bells app. Our free app allows you to pre-order, pre-pay, and then choose a desired pickup time. Once you arrive at Bourbon and Bells, we'll have your items boxed up and load them directly into your car. Bourbon and Bells will revolutionize your life. Is this open now? Yes, sir. Now, where's this at? In the Highlands Douglas Loop on Bartstown Road. Highlands, Highlands what, Douglas Loop. Highlands. Yeah, what building? The Tom Drexler building. Okay. At least the back, back yeah. space of that. And how, how long have you been open? October 17th, about three months. And what are your sales so far? About $70,000. Um, for that period, for that three three month period, basically? Yes, sir. All equal, or how, how did it kind of ramp? Is it ramping up? Well, January, I knew from the beginning was going to be rough in all retail. Um, so, December, November, and December were big months for us, especially with the holidays. Now, is that kind of tough in January when people are coming in with messy cars? I mean, what does that do to your space? Um, no, it, I mean, we just have to wash it down, squeegee it out. But it hadn't been a big deal? Mm -hmm. And uh, when they do drive through, are there employees helping them? A so, a so like you said, Bell. I don't have to get out of my car. Right, okay. so when you come through the drive-through, a Southern Bell or a Gent will come to your car with an iPad and take your order, and then the products are brought back out to your car for you, and out you go. You can also walk in as well into our retail space. In our retail space, we actually have weekly bourbon and wine tastings. It's a concept that I've been working on for a while in my head, and it's finally here, and I'm super proud of it. What do you think? Would you put your money behind this business? Find out if any of our investors are willing to get on board, next on Dream Funders. Welcome back to Dream Funders, the TV series that matches local entrepreneurs with big money investors. Earlier, we met Jennifer Stetson, who recently opened a drive through grocery and liquor store in the Highlands called Bourbon and Bells. Well, as a single mom, I always was frustrated that I could drive up to a window and get wine, but when I ran out of milk and didn't want to deal with the grocery store, when I ran into a convenience store, I had to get my daughter out of the car as well. It's a concept that I've been working on for a while in my head and it's finally here. Now she's hoping to get the new business up to speed with help from our panel of investors. Funders, what say you? I'm loving the setup. I'm loving, I mean, your presentation, your detail oriented, um, which is very, very good, right? But you're doing so many things, right? And I mean, you know, I grew up in Bullitt County. I try to catch three chickens, I catch none of them, right? I, you know, you, catch, you go after one. How many items do you carry on the pantry side? On the pantry side, we probably have without, it's about 600, but that includes the flavors too. So you have like, you know, Coke, Pepsi, Diet, Fanta, Grape, um, Lemonade, Capri Suns, Fruitables. So basically the products that you see when you go into a gas station. Skim milk, whole milk, 1%, like all the types. Yes, ma'am. So what's your, like if I go to Walmart and buy that X, Y, or Z pantry item, how much more are you for the convenience? Walmart versus convenience? Yeah, versus you driving through. Is it significant? Was, no. I mean, it's not a price that someone's not willing to pay to not have to get out of their car. But how much is that? Are you 10% higher or 20% higher? I would say the average is probably 10 to 20. 
I mean, you're talking about a 20 ounce Diet Coke's $2. How many employees do you have? Currently I have six. What's your break even on this per month? What's, your, what's that monthly break even point? We need to, our daily sales average to break even, including purchasing new inventory, needs to be about $800 a day gross. I mean, where, where are you advertising? Well, I just recently had a billboard that went up last week, and that has been my major problem, is getting traffic into my store. A lot of people do not know that I'm there, um, and that's why I've come to you all. I mean, my house is nowhere near there, so I would not really go there, you know, on my way home. Right. So is it going to be focused on getting customers from that neighborhood? I think not only neighbors, but also people coming home from work. You can get on your app while you're sitting at your desk and order whatever you want. Your wife or husband or significant other can be at home and get on their app and just, just swing on through and it's done. It truly is a beautiful, beautiful concept. Um, I can't add value here because I know nothing about retail. Um, I wrote down the address, I'll be a customer. I know. Um, I, it's just not, invest-wise, it's just not the businesses I do. So only because of that's why I'm out, because I certainly believe in you and your cause. Well, thank you for your time. I think you got something going on. I, I keep pursuing it, but for, for me as an investor, I, I just don't, I can't add anything at this point, so thank you. How about thank you, Marty? You. I live too far away. I can't be an investor. <laughs> Just because you're not a customer. Jennifer, yeah. Yeah. what are um, your thoughts on it? I am out, but only because it, uh, just a little bit to what Micah said, it's a little bit too early for me to kind of know if it's going to take off or not. I mean, I think that I am also going to go there and check it out. And, you know, then maybe I'll have to ask Melissa for your contact information. Good luck, Jennifer. Thank you very much for your all's time. Even though we didn't make a match this time, there's still hope. In fact, here at the Fraser History Museum, you can find plenty of inspiration to keep trying. You know, there's hundreds of stories of innovation that are told in this museum, and uh, we hope it's a place of inspiration for all. This exhibit, which documents the history of Louisville's Doe Anderson ad agency, is full of inspiration and creativity. So one of my favorite things, Todd Spencer is the president of Doe Anderson right now and one of the parts of that exhibit includes a rejection letter. The first job that he applied for at Doe Anderson he was turned down, he was rejected, he didn't get the job and he saved that letter and he now has that letter sitting next to his picture as president of Doe Anderson. So that should be an inspiration for anybody who maybe the first time around doesn't uh, get exactly what they want but uh, keep at it. Keep at it. It's good advice for our dreamers and everyone in every phase of life. I'm Melissa Fraser. We'll see you next time on Dream Funders.